Hello, I'm Jonathan Hall. If you're new to JSON with Go, today I'm going to show you a quick trick to make your JSON decoding easier. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit subscribe. If you learned something today, hit the like button too. That really helps me. And if you have questions, leave a comment. I'd love to hear back from you and I'll hopefully answer your questions in an upcoming video. But the topic for today, decoding JSON. I've written a short little HTTP client that fetches some code from uh, the Catfax uh, API. It's a neat little JSON API for testing things out. Um, you can see the code here. Uh, it's a really simple uh, program uh, with a main that just uh, calls uh, my get fact method. The get fact thing is the that that function is is what's interesting here. And let me just walk you through it. Uh, it queries the catfact.ninja uh, API uh, using the http.get uh, function, which is just a little uh, shortcut for setting up a request and everything. Um, then it reads the body of the response, assuming no error. And uh, then it uh, passes that body into the json.unmarshal function. Now, a couple things to be aware of here. Uh, there, there are a lot of substandard things about this code. So please don't pay attention to that. My focus today is on JSON unmarshalling, not on making proper HTTP requests. For example, I'm not checking the status code. Uh, the, the API might return a 400 or a 403 or, or who knows what, and I'm completely ignoring that. I'm assuming that everything is, uh, is a 200. It's, it's a good response. Um, that's bad practice, but since I'm only focusing on JSON today, uh, let's gloss over that. And please forgive me for not giving a good demonstration of how to do uh, API calls. I'll do that later. But for, for today, the important part is, is this. And there's two parts here. The first is when we read in the uh, response body right here. It just creates, it just reads off the network and puts it into a variable called body. And then we unmarshal. And I see this sort of code all over the place. And I want to show you a shorter way to do the exact same thing. Let me show you. Ta-da! Wasn't that quick? So all this really does is combines those two steps. The first step being reading the body, the second decoding it into a single step. The main advantage to this is you only have to do error checking once. It also makes the code a little bit shorter to read. Um, but there are a few nuances that I want to talk about here. Uh, but let's first jump over to the Go doc to make sure that you have a clear understanding of what this is doing. So here I'm looking at the Go doc for the encoding JSON package. It's part of the Go standard library. And uh, you can see that uh, the, the first function I call this is new decoder, and it takes an IO reader as an argument. Now that reader, of course, that I'm passing to it in my code, is the response body, which is an IO reader. It's uh, a stream of bytes off of the network. The only thing I'm using it for though, is this decode method. And this decode method actually does the exact same thing that the unmarshal function does, which we can find here. The only difference is that with the unmarshal function, you have to pass a byte slice, which contains your actual encoded JSON. However, with the decode method on the decoder type, I don't need to pass in that byte slice because it just reads that from the IO reader that I passed in earlier when I created the object. So that's kind of handy because it just, it, it simplifies things. So back in the code here, you, you see it's, it's shorter. It's not a, it's not a huge improvement in uh, length of code, but it's nice and it, it makes things a little bit shorter. There's a little bit less error handling, which is often one of the biggest complaints people have about uh, using Go. Uh, so, so that's it. Now, some of the, the nuances that you might be, uh, maybe should be aware of, uh, the things that are slightly different between these two approaches. The, the first one is, uh, and maybe most obviously, uh, when you use the d new decoder approach, as I do here, uh, it consumes the data off of the network. If I want to use that same byte slice again for something else, maybe to decode again or to print out to a log or something like that, I'm out of luck. I've used up the bytes off of the network and they're gone. So if I do it the old way where I read in the body first, that serves as a sort of buffer and I can reuse the same byte slice for multiple operations. 
whatever those might be. So that's one thing to consider. Of course, there are other ways that you can buffer that. You, uh, you can use a T reader or uh, read it into something else. Um, that's beyond the scope of this video. Uh, but that's just the first thing to be aware of. Uh, when you read an IO reader, you consume it. So this consumes the, the body in a way that the, uh, the body variable in my previous version does not. And that kind of relates to the second, uh, maybe main difference. And that is that if you have multiple JSON objects on the same stream, the new decoder lets you easily uh, parse them one after the other. Now, what I mean by multiple JSON objects, I don't mean like an array. I mean a JSON object followed by another one, followed by another one, which you might have in some uh, situations uh, with a network uh, protocol. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about there. So this is a, a super, super simple example of three JSON objects in a row that the new decoder approach would let you more easily uh, use. So imagine that you're talking to an API that just, maybe maybe it's a streaming API that sends a JSON object every second or, or something like that. Um, with the new decoder, you could call the decode method repeatedly and uh, read one object at a time from that uh, that reader when you pass in a byte if you if you read the entire uh, body and then pass it into uh, JSON on Marshall it's just going to decode the first one so anything after that first object uh, is is unaccessible essentially in contrast if you use the unmarshall function anything after the first valid JSON object will be treated as an error let me demonstrate in the go playground this little snippet reads uh, three objects, very similar to what I showed on the previous screen, uh, passes them through JSON on Marshall, but you'll see that it uh, returns an error, invalid character after top level value. Uh, so if you have multiple JSON objects on the same data stream, uh, JSON on Marshall will not work. If I modify this though to use the, the other approach, it does. So you see there with the uh, decoder and decode, it reads, uh, of course, in this case, I'm only reading the first value, but it reads it successfully with no error. The other two objects are still there in the stream and can be read if I want to. The last difference I'll mention is the way error handling works. And this isn't usually a problem, but I'll just mention it because it's a little bit different. Uh, in the previous method, we get one error if we have a network problem reading the network response. And that's a clearly distinct error because it happens when you call uh, the copy uh, uh, function. And then if you have a decoding error because of invalid JSON, for example, you get a second distinct error that happens when you call unmarshal. In this case, since those two operations are merged into a single operation, either error could come out uh, at this time. Now, if you care about that, you can still detect what type of error you receive by looking at the error type. Any error generated by the JSON on Marshall process will be of a type generated by the JSON package. Let me show you that on the Godoc as well. So you see there's a couple different error types. There's the uh, Marshall error, which uh, happens when encoding. We would be worried about unmarshalling. So here we have the unmarshal field error, which is no longer used. <laughs> unmarshal type error which is still used, and unsupported type error. So uh, any any uh, error that happens, I guess uh, unsupported type only happens during marshalling. So for unmarshalling, it would, it would essentially be an unmarshaled type error or an unsupported value error. So there's the two possibilities. So if you care whether the error occurred during the network read as opposed to JSON unmarshalling, you could check the error type, whether it matches one of these two types. Otherwise, there's there's no meaningful difference uh, in the error handling. So that's my tip for today. Using JSON new decoder dot decode rather than the two-step read and then decode uh, when you're decoding JSON. If JSON marshalling and unmarshalling and these sorts of things are of interest to you, I have an ebook I'm working on. Uh, it's not complete yet, but you can you can buy it and read what's available, and then you get updates for free as they come out. 
It's on LeanPub. The link will be in the description, of course. Or just leave a comment with your questions uh, in, in JSON-related topics. I'll be happy to address those in a future video. Thanks for watching.